our PWD type ones. <coughs> they have a fixed dose of insulin unless they are taught calf counting and they are on an insulin pump therapy wherein they are given the option to you know adjust their dose of insulin. But 95% of our patients have a go home with a fixed dose of insulin. So today he is having three slices of multigrain bread. Tomorrow he cannot have five pulkas at the same meal time. Or day after he cannot have one and a half cup of a broken wheat rava lapsi. He cannot do it that way. If he does it that way, then definitely there is going to be glycemic variability in the same meal. That is why this introduction of food exchange list game, wherein the patient can be given options. He will be told two cereal exchanges. So he can choose on 50 grams of any cereal in the list which I provided. It could be rice flakes, it could be quinoa, oats, it could be the rice, it could be wheat, anything. So I just need to mention how many exchanges he need to take, either from cereal, pulse or whole gram, and he can choose on whatever he wants. So there is variety in his diet. Unable to move it, right? Yeah. So after which came the concept of calf counting. Yes, in between we also have the glycemic index, the glycemic load. Then came the concept of calf counting. As soon as calf counting walked in, we also had nutrition labeling to add on or support calf counting. When I say calf counting, what was the history behind calf counting? This method has been used since 1935 in Europe and was adopted by the very landmark trial that is the DCCC trial. What happened after that? The ADA had proposed it in 1960. This, this was used in 1935. ADA proposed carb counting in 1960 and in 1994 ADA recommended this as an additional tool in the nutritional management of diabetes mellitus. It is also started to be used in Brazil after a few years in 1997. But nowadays, everywhere we use carb counting. Now, in between this, as I mentioned to you, between 1960 and 1994, nutrition labeling came into the market. When I say nutrition labeling, in India, we are now having a lot of packaged foods with a nutrition label providing us with the carbohydrate, fat, and protein. But in the Western population, most of the foods are packed and they have the nutrition label mandates which talk to us about the carbohydrate, fat, protein, as well as the micronutrients. So when I talk of carb counting, as I mentioned to you, it was developed in 1960s by ADA. This is for those who are on insulin pumps or on you know, multiple daily dose of injections. It could be a type 1, it could be a GKM or it could be a uh, type 2 who has been uh, traveling on regular basis. But he has to be both on basal and bolus dose of insulin. Only then we can implement carb counting. Now when I say a particular food, as above say 17 grams of carbohydrate like I showed to you that one cereal exchange which means 25 grams of any raw weight of cereal it could be rice, wheat, ragi or any millet or oats that would contain approximately 17 grams of carbohydrate so when I say 17 grams of carbohydrate you would see between 11 to 20 17 pores so which means when I consume one cereal exchange it is equivalent to one carb count now when, when it comes to one carb count, what is the purpose of one carb count? I would have to also think of the routine snacks which are consumed and most unfortunately we have one patent biscuit which walks into the house of every PWD. Unfortunately, one needs to choose on options which are much more healthier options than choosing on the biscuit options. But we, we need to understand that if I am choosing on Say the most commonly used biscuits are the maple gold biscuits, which have almost 100 grams means there are 20 biscuits in the pack, and each biscuit is about 5 grams. If I am going to take about uh, 4 biscuits, it would be it could mean more than 20 grams of carbohydrate. So when I say more than 20 grams of carbohydrate, it is falling in the one and a half cereal exchange. So we need to understand how many grams of carbohydrate are present in each packaged food for us to choose on understanding that how much insulin extra will be required for that extra amount of carbohydrate which is consumed. But remember carbohydrate counting will help in blood glucose control with the help of insulin to carb ratio and insulin sensitivity factor but though it may be even mimic the pancreas in helping you with the insulin dose but you remember that when you are going to consume more and more carbohydrate and adjust the dose of insulin for good glycemic control, you are going to land up with 
for basis. So then the exchange risk moved further, as I mentioned to you. Keep keeping in mind glycemic index, glycemic load, next came into the component, fat protein unit. Every food which provides 100 calories from both fat and protein put together would require one unit of insulin extra. That means a fat protein unit. Say suppose I prepare an egg omelet which will approximately give me 100 calories from both fat and protein which has got zero carbs. It is going to require one unit of insulin on a delayed pattern because the postprandial glycemic response to this fat protein unit will be a slightly on the delayed slide when compared to carbohydrate. Then came into the movement this the sodium exchange list, the potassium, the phosphorus for cardiovascular diseases as well as CK. Now I will deep dive into a case study for us to understand how we use these exchange lists carb counting in our day-to-day -day menu planning. We have a GDM mother, her pre-pregnancy BMI was in and around 23. She has a family step type 2 diabetes. She had a bad obstructive history. She once again conceived that her fasting was 108 and postprandial was 2 hours, was 210 milligrams. She was provided with sharp-acting insulin and long-acting insulin. These were not analog insulin. This is regular insulin. That is short and long-acting insulin. Now we had a demographic medical, medical history, subjective data and objective data based on the height and pre-pregnancy weight. We do not calculate BMI in GDM mothers. We calculated the ideal body weight with the help of the divine formula. I will not deep dive into very fine details but give you a gross idea of what we did for this patient. Obviously we have the target less than 95 for fasting, post prandial less than 120, HPA1C we will expect less than 6 and we have the problem that is hyperglycemia, etiology is nutrition knowledge deficit and signs and symptoms as evidenced by biochemical parameters. So what are the nutritional goals for the GDM mother to promote fetal and maternal uh, weight gain? We do not want ketosis, we do not want hypoglycemia, we want euglycemic status and long term goals would be she has to maintain her IBW after delivery and prevent type 2 diabetes. Now based on the IDF MENA guidelines as well as the, uh, you know, we have the Ministry of Government of India's guidelines. Keeping all the guidelines in mind, since it's been the first trimester, we do not cross 30 kilocalories per kg ideal body weight. And as we mentioned before, so we use the divine formula to calculate our IBW. Minimum 175 grams of carbohydrate have to be given to prevent starvation fetuses. According to ADA or IDF guidelines, we need to give at least 71 grams of protein throughout the day. Fiber has to be a minimum of 28 grams per day. Salt will, presently she is not having any PI, so we don't have to worry as much. We need to give her 2300 milligrams of sodium per day. Fluids is a minimum of 2.3 liters. Since she is on, not on an analog insulin, we calculate the insulin sensitivity factor with the rule of 1500 divided by the total daily dose of insulin to give, get the ISF. And to get the ICR, 500 is a standard divided by total daily dose of insulin, which tells us that every 18.5 grams of carbohydrate, meaning every cereal exchange, she takes extra from her routine, she may require an extra unit of insulin. Now for 55 milligrams, approximately as I mentioned to you, the rule of uh, 1500 divided by total daily dose gives me about 56 milligrams of blood glucose, which can be handled by one unit of insulin. Now, how do I put it across? I use the exchange. I know I require around 1560 calories at the rate of 30 kilocalories per kg ideal body weight. Now, I've got, i put down the exchange list. Always we need to remember with the GTM mother, we need to split the breakfast in order to prevent hyperglycemia because of the risk of dawn phenomenon. We do not want fasting hyperglycemia. That is why, and whenever there is fasting hyperglycemia throughout the day, the blood sugars are poor control. So we usually split the breakfast and uh, lunch and dinner is not split, especially when they are on insulin. When they are not on insulin, we split all the three meals so that we keep the postprandial glycemic response a little on the blunt edge side and keep the glycemic load of the meal out of the low. So now keeping the calories in mind, we have distributed the number of cereal exchanges, nine cereal exchanges, two pulse exchanges, one whole gram which means Rajma, Chana, Rongi, Green leafy vegetables at least about 150 grams per day, which means one and a half cereal exchange. In roots and tubers, we can talk of raw carrot, raw beet, sweet potato boiled with squeeze the lemon juice over it in order to make it a resistance starch. Two 
ਕੰਟਰੋਲ ਗਲਾਈਸੀਮਿਕ ਕੰਟਰੋਲ ਇਸ ਦਾ ਪਾਸਟਿੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਪੋਸਟ ਕੰਟਰੋਲ ਆਰ ਗੁੱਡ ਕੰਟਰੋਲ ਐਂਡ ਅ 7 ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਗਲਾਈਸੀਮਿਕ ਪ੍ਰੋਫਾਈਲ ਇਸ ਗੁੱਡ then we may think about proof either in the evening or bed time to prevent nocturnal hypoglycemia or starvation diseases visible sugar that are big no whole milk only about say 50 ml could be provided per day provided she does not take a dash of ghee in her diet and ideally she goes with skim the milk because the more the amount of saturated fat and trans fat from whole milk the risk of maternal hypertriglyceridemia which in turn converts to macrosomia and egg white is always lean we do not choose on egg yolk which are the source of saturated fat and total fat could be about say 4 teaspoons in our entire day's meal so this gives us what we require and what we have planned it's easiest for us to split the exchanges through the day calculate it and get the required calories protein we are all within our recommendation so based on this recommendation we convert it into a menu this menu would be usually low gi low gl the rich in only natural omega 3 fatty acids rich in micronutrients choose a lente carbs like whole grains chana rajma added to prior to the meal in order to have the blunted post prandial glycemic response choose on protein prior to the meal it could be nuts it could be whole gram it could be raita it could be paneer it could be lean chicken prior to the meal so that the post prandial response is blunted so the whole meal 